Welcome to Ragnar Riders Shop Talk, the ultimate pit stop for all things two-wheeled and roaring. We are mostly ordinary guys who live and breathe the motorcycle lifestyle. From our personal journeys to gripping product and accessory reviews, bike builds that redefine the road, the latest industry buzz, and a sneak peek into our future travels, consider this your front row seat to our motorcycling odyssey. So kick back, relax, and let the engines roar as we dive deep into the world of chrome, leather, and the sweet symphony of the open highway. Welcome to Ragnar Riders Shop Talk, where the rubber meets the road and the stories unfold in the wind. What is up, my motorcycle peeps? DJ Seeley here, Ragnar Riders Shop Talk with John and Randy. We are day two, three. Day three for us, mm -hmm. Daytona Bike Week 2024. Just uh, checking in with you guys, tell you how the day went. Uh, Randy, where we start at today? Well, let's see. Uh, did we, we didn't do one last night, right? So we really have kind of two days to yeah to catch up on here. Yeah, yesterday um, was a little long, bit of a long day. Yeah, slightly. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know, brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was a really long day, yeah. guys. Woo. Let's see, we got our picture made. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we did get to ride the little uh, scenic, uh, Ormond scenic route again, and loop, I think is what they call it. It's pretty cool. Um, I could eat breakfast at the ocean uh, side bar and grill every day. That's yeah, I, I went uh, today with intent of ordering something different, and the house omelet just, just gets me. Um, it just speaks... To, to the pits of my soul and uh, love it. John, what'd you get? Uh, I tried something different. I got the Epinatas. Mm. Very good. Yep, I'll do it again. So I had the talk to Burrito the other day, the Epinatas today. There are, um, they'll get a chuckle out of this um, because they're assholes. Uh, but um, usually when I find something I like, I hang on to it for a little while. Um, and, um, yeah, I could go back there, um, uh, probably every day. It's, it's good stuff and good service. We have talking about us. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, just, um, anyway, <laughs> so today, so we got up today, uh, with, uh, intense uh, intentions of, uh, visiting, uh, we had a, a little couple of missions. Uh, we wanted to go see, um, our, uh, friends at Microdot, uh, helmets. We were in need of, um, refreshing some helmets, visiting Corbin for some seat information and possible purchasing and, um, and just kind of, um, you there, we had a lot of rain last night, right? Was it last night we had the rain? Mm-hmm. So this has not been the perfect. We've been coming down here uh, some fashion of us now for a couple of years. Uh, some, either all of us or a couple of us or whatever, off and on fall, spring. And uh, this is the first year, first trip where it has just not been sunny and beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to complain. Um, it's it, There's been some riding and yes, we've had endure um, yesterday afternoon. Um, no, today. Today we pulled into a place just to grab a, a snack, uh, and uh, the bottom falling out. Would that be a good? Uh... It, it rained pretty hard for thirty minutes, an hour yeah. maybe. So we had a snack, and then and then that happened. But uh, so hey, one of the questions that I wanted to pose to DJ it was hitting me. We were riding the other day, and in a few uh, earlier episodes, uh, the guys had asked me about. Um, Sturgis when I went up there and the level of um, uh, experience that a person would need to feel comfortable riding the Black Hills and this that and the other uh, the other day we were riding John was leading you were in the middle I was behind and he just hit me this is something I wanted to talk about in our one of our podcasts here that we're doing on site um, their own location and that is uh, now that you've ridden down here on two wheels uh, a little bit last spring and you were just kind of getting back into two. Yeah. Um, and those of you that's heard some of our earlier podcasts kind of know DJ's story on that. And if you don't uh, feel free to go back and we'll uh, uh, try to make some reference uh, uh, 
points in the posting of the video or or podcast, so you can go back. But anyway, he he's get, last year got back on two wheels, so he, a year later, much better, improving, doing great. But that question was posed, and I've been waiting about twenty four hours to ask this: How do you feel riding in this environment? Not only in a rally environment, uh, two type bikes you've brought, mm -hmm. but in, a, in in the in the weather environment as well. So let's speak a little bit about that uh, experience and how you feel and where that falls. Okay. Uh, that question kind of caught me off guard. This is unscripted, y'all. So uh, uh, I'll probably have to process that for a minute. But, uh, you know, coming down here, I have been down here a number of times, uh, a couple of times on the trike. I, uh, last year when we came, I brought the Ultra Limited. We uh, rode it around some and, and, you know, went to destination, got some work done on it. Uh, brought the road glide and the beamer uh, this trip rode both of them around so uh, you know I'm, I'm not as reluctant here because I'm familiar with it uh, it's Florida you know that hairpins and switchbacks aren't really the thing down here so um, stop signs and red lights is about yeah it. it's stop signs and red lights more than anything um, so uh, you know, I, I'm fine with it. Weather conditions, uh, you know, I, I've ridden in plenty of rain in in the trike. I, I give y'all a hard time about it, but it really doesn't. Uh, it it doesn't scare me as much as I put on that it does. Mm. It's, it's just frustrating more than it is anything. I know the bike's perfectly capable of handling it. Um, so now, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem down here really. So I guess in the, in the, in the direction of, of that, I guess, um, um, John, you've been riding for years. You rode kind of like I did. I guess our story is similar. We, we rode in our early uh, life for several years and then had a space of no riding. And then, you know, we're now back into it a couple, three years. Um, how do you find your ability having kind of had two lifetimes of riding, uh, riding in an environment like this, um, you know, trying to be, and I'll speak for myself on this statement, you know, back in the day, I don't ever recall thinking along the lines of how I do today. You know, I, I wasn't married uh, and I didn't have kids. And I was young, you know, I was going to live forever, I guess. I don't recall ever thinking about, I mean, it was safe, but not the way I think today. How, how does yours fall into that? Yeah, uh, I guess two thoughts come to mind with your question. The first one being that uh, I think at, at our age now, in this experience of, of riding seasons, um, that I'm a lot more situational aware of other people. I, I want to use a different term, but I'll say people. I agree. Um, and not... You know, riding back home every day and not in this environment, you you kind of focus in on, on the four-wheeled cars because they're not looking for you. Um, but down here in this environment, you almost have to heighten your sense of what other people are doing on two wheels. Um, and especially on some of these roads down here in Daytona, as you maneuver from, I don't know, Flagler down to Armand to Holly Hills to Daytona Beach, uh, down to Lake Smyrna, there's there's a lot of side roads, um, and I know these these people that live here and the, the, the cars they're used to this, and I think they're predominantly respectful. But uh, especially at night, you just never know when somebody's going. I don't know if you. I was leading back from dinner tonight, and there was a car coming out of a I don't know some fast food restaurant, and they kept inching forward and. I don't yeah. know if you saw me jet over into the turn lane because I thought they were coming. You yeah. did, and I, and I checked yeah. my mirrors. Randy was following me, and I had to glance up at my mirrors, make sure that he wasn't too close to me, and I, I eased over because yeah. I, I, I saw him too. I wasn't sure if they were fixing to pull out or not. Yeah. I, I, you know how some of you just have that spidey sense of, hey, they're about to pull out front yeah. and I, you know, But I had that happen uh, at Thunder Beach. What was it fall before last? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We kind of got split up, making a left-hand turn with oncoming traffic, and I held back. Uh, 
the two of y'all and my son made it through. And then by the time I got cleared, there was a gap. And car watched y'all pass thinking our group was gone. And there he was. Well, now, I mean, it was just inches. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the first, I guess, point. Um, the second point that comes to mind, and, and I guess I don't know why I didn't really focus in on this as much. Maybe there's with some of the other social media accounts that are out there. I think we've referenced, referenced Ride Like a Pro and stuff like that. Uh, and there's another guy out of Georgia, I think. I can't name be the boss of your motorcycle yeah, be the or boss. something like that. Um, Shout out to you guys. You, you know, do a good job. Yeah, they do a great job, and I think they really promote safety on motorcycles in a tremendous way. So huge shout out to them. Um, mad respect for that. But I think I'm more aware of increasing my proficiency of slow riding. And I think down here in this environment, especially during bike week, not so much during Oktoberfest, but during bike week, uh, I noticed just in the opening weekend, it, there's a tremendous increase in the amount of people, cars and motorcycles. And so you're doing a lot of uh, slow riding. You're doing a lot of slow maneuvers. Mm -hmm. You're doing a lot of U-turns because of the way they had the traffic cones for safety Correct. Uh, set up. Um, and I mean, I, I, I've seen, I, I feel like I'm doing uh, some of those maneuvers at times where you do the figure eight yeah. and, and for car spaces. Uh, I've made some of those turns while I'm down here. Mm -hmm. um, and that, But that is something because of watching some of those videos online that I have gone to a parking lot and practiced. Yeah. Intention not only with just me on the bike, but even with my wife on the bike and the two boat setup. Yeah. I've gotten into four spot, four parking spots, and I've done the figure eight, you know, training practice, yeah. and and I think that's helped. So um, I feel that by doing that in a controlled environment has helped me in what I will call. I don't know if I should say uncontrolled environment, but I can't control outside factors. Like I can't right. lot. but because of my training myself to be, become more proficient, I feel more confident in those maneuvers. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. yeah. And, and you mentioned your spidey senses. <laughs> uh, do, do you do you think those spidey senses help you in maneuver? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it's just a reaction. Yes, I, I, I really thought about it. But. You know, after the uh, uh, coming back from and, and the, the wreck that that I had, I have since really the only thing that I look at when there's a car uh, coming into uh, out of a, uh, a side road or whatever it may be is I only look at their wheels. Uh, I don't look at the car itself. My focus is on the wheels because you can if the wheels begin to move. Then I, I get on. I get on. You know, I'm gonna alert anyway, but I get really antsy at that point. Mm -hmm. Not to the point of, of uh, you know, potentially, you know, uh, doing something for my you know, myself over there. But I'm I'm ready to react. Um, and and I did doing some research in um, uh, after what happened to me being able to do that. I look back and you know, in, in the GoPro video, the wreck was videoed pretty um, clearly. Yeah. And, and I went back and looked, and yeah, his wheels, it was much easier to see. You can see spokes, and you can see, you know, things. You, it, the movement of that, you can see more than the blur of paint and a large object. You could see those wheels move, and, and that was, that seems to be something that um, is, uh, I guess, out there pretty pretty well known for, for when you're uh, seeing a car pull up, and then that's what I look for. Yeah. I, I guess I, you know, I'm not by no means an NTSB uh, detective or inspection or anything like that. But um, you know, I, I would say that that's probably because of the experience you had, yeah, probably yeah. something that your your eyes and mind view in on. Um, I kind of use the technique of just looking at it. I, I take in my mind millions of little snapshots at every moment, yeah. and when I see. It's kind of like, you know, if you're walking through the woods and you're trying to look for a figure, you look for irregular figures. Right. You know, legs spread in, in the woods indicates that that's an animal or somebody. You right. Because that's not, an inverted V is not a common, something that you see um, right. in the woods. So I kind of relate that into, into, you know, when I'm in traffic, 
uh, look for those things that are out of normal, abnormal behavior. Um, you know, somebody that's pulling up and not stopping or pulling up in an angle to where they can't necessarily see or right. as they pull up, their driver's side window uh, is blocked by a uh, telephone pole. Or, right. You know, any, anything that seems abnormal is what my brain locks in on. And when I see that abnormality, then I prepare myself for the what ifs. Does that make sense? It, it does make sense because, it, you know, you know, you really, everybody says, well, it's a split moment. You don't have a lot of time. Let me tell you something. That split moment turns into about an hour when it's happening. Slows down. It, it really slows down because I do the same thing. I look for the wheels to move. If the sun is behind me, I know they're looking into the sun. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm just far more aware. And, and look, I'll, both of you have done the same thing that I, I, I've done for years. I have changed the way I do it for the most part. There are still exceptions to the rule where, you know, maybe I know the environment or the community or the road, but I've pulled up to many a stop sign and not come to a complete stop or a red light knowing I'm going to turn right and I just kind of guess and hope for the best. Not so necessarily when, when I'm in a car. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. When I'm on forward. Yes. Um, you know, uh, just knowing that, you know, I'm not. I'm just know, helping him make his point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you no, know, knowing that, you know. Hit the hill. <laughs> Slow roll a stop sign on a bike. Too. Oh, I don't know. I turn my head if I don't see anything coming. I'm going. I don't know. Well, I try not to stop at a red light anyway. I did, but that's a practicing maneuver on myself where I slow you down and up. To, yeah, where I just kind of yeah. Line. So, but I mean, in a car, I should have <laughs> missed that part. That was a pretty big important part of that. But anyway, in a car where you know I just kind of slow and never really stop. And I, I've really tried to work on that um, the last couple of years. You know, just and that's a habit to get into. Hard habit to break. Chicago, 86, no pun intended. Yeah, I missed that reference. But anyway, so, so, <laughs> it, but it really hasn't been bad. You know, okay. we've been down here before where it seems like every time you turn around, there's an ambulance and sirens going. Um, and that's that's scary. But I haven't, uh, I, I mean, I've heard a couple, of, but nothing like what we've experienced before down here. So um, maybe, maybe with the weather, people will just be a little bit more cautious. Uh, Maybe it's first of the season, so people are being more cautious. Uh, I, you know, who knows? But it really hasn't been a bad experience down here, other than just the traffic. The traffic has been a little more intense, in my opinion, than my previous times to have been down here. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be a lot more car traffic. Yeah. And, and slingshot traffic. Oh, gosh, and, and slingshots, yes. Oh, uh, you, you know, uh, let me hit on something real quick. One thing that I, I try and do when riding. Uh, at night, it's a little more difficult than during the day. During the day, you know, if I'm rolling through an intersection, I, I kind of, you know, I'll downshift, I'll cover my brakes. I may not apply brakes. Uh, you know, I'm going to slow down to a, a you know, reasonable speed to get through the intersection. But uh, I try and make eye contact with, with the people at the intersection. And if I can make eye contact with them and know that, okay, they saw me. Yep. And, and now I just try and get through that intersection a, as quickly as possible. Yeah. You know, if, if I know that guy saw me and he's the only one at the red light, then I'm safe and I, I, you know, I'm blowing through that intersection before anybody else comes into that intersection. Uh, so that's a practice I, I try and do. Certainly, like I said, during the day, that's easier to do than at night. At night, you got, you know, lights and glares and windows and things like that that, that you know, don't aid in that, but. Um, you know, another thing, you know, riding at home versus here at home, you know, where the technical terms are going to be and, and, and where the possibilities of the U-turns might be or where the traffic conditions are going to be, you know, favorable or not. Uh, you get down here and, uh, you may not be able to avoid circumstances that you otherwise could. Yeah. You know, sometimes the traffic, you, you might have to pull out a, a little quicker than you would, would like. You know, you, there might not be as much space as you would appreciate having. Uh, you might only have one lane instead of both lanes uh, to make that turn. So 
that's one thing that I have to watch and be conscious of, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm checking to see what's clear, or what's coming, or, you know, if, if you know, my riding buddy pulls out, I, I'm, you know, making a quicker look or, or something than I, that I maybe would have otherwise if, if we were in a little slower environment. Yeah. I, you know, <clears throat> when the three of us ride together, whether our spouses are with us or not, for the most part, I think we are able to come to a stop sign, all three take off. You know, it's a it's a group big enough to be seen, small enough to not have to, you know, have a tail gunner or anything like that. Um, but, but, you know, the old saying is, is that, you know, uh, I don't want to use the word, it's about to say tragedy, but wrecks, things about nature, you know, happen within just you know, miles of your home, I think it's because maybe we get a little more relaxed because it is a familiar area. Mm -hmm. Whereas in an environment like down here or even, you know, driving to Georgia like we did this year and, and John, you're in Mobile, new area down there. Maybe you're a little more uh, aware, at least for a little while, because you're not comfortable. And I've gotten really comfortable down here. I know where a lot of things are at. So that's a good thing. And I guess maybe it could be a bad thing. Um, but, um, you know, your, your situation that happened with you was in your cul-de-sac in your neighborhood and mine was, you know, a mile from my house after, you know, putting 2000 miles on the bike in two weeks, so to speak. So, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, I guess true to a degree. Um, but there's no doubt that, you know, a, a, an area like, uh, like John just described really from New Smyrna beach all the way to. You know, really St. Augustine, I guess, maybe yeah, Flagler. Flagler but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an enormous, uh, vast area with lots of roads uh, and, and, and environment to, to ride in. Um, and we've done this before, uh, but and I'll do it again, but, but a big shout out to um, Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, and the cities in the surrounding areas by putting up a digital signage yeah. that says, you know, bike week, you know, look twice, watch for bikers, you know, cones, direction, cops are out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I haven't felt, you know, that there's, it's been a danger situation anytime I've been down here. You have your exceptions to that rule and your idiots are going, they're everywhere. Um, but, uh, but I think for the most part, they do a good job. We got, I get frustrated some around destination Daytona, you know, how they redirected all that and, and it really becomes a, a bottleneck and frustrating, especially if the weather's warm and the bikes are hot and you're sitting there. But, you know, in the end, it's just a little wait time, but it's it seems to be much safer and they've done a good job at mm -hmm. processing that. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so what did, what did we do yesterday? Uh, was that, we went to international, we started off going to international, is that right? Yesterday? We did. We went to Speedway yesterday first and Speedway was, was nice. It was popping it had a lot of stuff going on you know spring when we were here didn't have a lot of uh, awful lot of stuff that's the and, most i've ever seen and in the fall it was dead yeah. 23 so i enjoyed that yeah yeah um, i was hoping to find some more more stuff in the adv world than than was there uh the only vendor there the uh, i don't know there were there were a couple uh wanderlich was there mm -hmm. um spent a little time looking at some of their product but I, I was kind of hoping to see some more stuff from that that uh, that line, but no big deal. Yep. But there was a good representation, I think, uh, across the motorcycle industry from the major motor motorcycle producers. I mean, that, more so than what I've seen in the past. Yeah. I mean, you had, of course, Harley had their major set up. Right. Um, that wasn't open yet. They were <laughs> always open on day two of the rally, but... Uh, that was a little disappointing, but uh, huge, huge setup. BMW had their setup. Um, Indian had their setup. Uh, let's see, Honda had a setup. Kawasaki uh, had a setup. Uh, Suzuki had a setup. I think so. I mean, it was. Yeah. The only one I didn't see is was there a Yamaha? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there was. was yeah, there actually was. Yeah. I even saw a Vespa. Setup. We yeah. were joking about that on a previous yeah. podcast. But yeah, they had a, a setup there. So. And then um, all your custom folks like uh, you know Boss Hoss and. Yeah, uh, uh, V8, V8 trucks or whatever. Yeah, some of those guys. So it was nice. To, it really was nice to see when you pull into the speedway, you know, the way they've had it routed for the last, I guess, couple, three years and maybe for a while back further than that. But, you know, you, the bikes kind of work their way around in front of the speedway and go under the, uh, their, their 
panels, not really the a building. Yeah. Um, but um, the right parking lot is one that's kind of been vacant, but it, it, it was full. Yeah, it was full. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen it have vendors set up in it. It's always yeah. been large parking before. So. Yeah. That was kind of exciting to see uh, a lot more stuff there than what I'd seen in previous years. Really, since we started coming, I guess, during COVID. Uh, yeah. And then one year was a you know, hurricane, so there was the week before, so there was some flooding still left, and a lot of yeah. vendors canceled. But yeah, this was definitely the most that I've seen here at a Marsh Rose Town Yeah, definitely seems to be a. a growing event um you know uh, good bad indifferent i don't i don't know yet to be determined maybe but uh, it's exciting to see people finding an interest in participating and showing up uh you know we got down here a day early and uh enjoyed you know what what's coined as pre-rally uh, and that was nice the, the traffic's you know much lighter it's easier to get around most of the vendors are open and uh, you get to spend more time talking with people uh but man yesterday was somebody kicked over an anthill man they did yeah. and uh, oh. <laughs> big difference i mean even today uh, you know we had intentions of getting up this morning and going back over to destination and uh you know, all three of us just said, you know what, we've been over there twice, and uh, maybe we can find something else to avoid the traffic. So yesterday we went back over there for the second time. After we went to International, we mm -hmm. went on the Speedway, we went back to Destination. And uh, y'all spent most of your time uh, looking at a particular item. What was that? The sounds? Is that right? Yeah audio system. Randy and I both are considering audio upgrades um, and and thought we had our, our minds kind of settled on something and uh, I, I wouldn't say that we've talked ourselves out of it but for the time being we have it. For the time being yeah we kind of shelved it until we can do some more research and, and kind of get our heads wrapped around what we want to do. So just hearing y'all talk and then obviously bouncing back and forth the three of us with our experiences, what with what audio upgrades we have, obviously there's the show level, you know, and, and you're talking pretty big investment to do that. There's a lot of things that you have to do, in addition to just wires and speakers and amps to really get, uh, well, I guess what we would consider a show level, and, and really that really is defined by the base, what we were used to in a car base in a motorcycle application. Right. You're that's a huge investment. Yeah. So then you step down to kind of a, for lack of a better term of description, a middle tier. And this is looking for something that has good quality sound that you can hear on your motorcycle going down the interstate. Right. Because let's just be honest, don't know there's really that many factory systems, OEM systems that over 60 miles an hour are even worth listening to. Yeah. Um, if in an open helmet, unless you've got some kind of earpiece, uh, either Bluetooth or wired connection. So then in that realm, there's a lot of options. I mean, you know, we've, uh, a lot of us, we, we, I guess three of us all started off with a Hertz system, right? which has a lot of positive attributes. There are a few drawbacks, um, but for the most part, you can find a Hertz system for a reasonable price point. And then there's others that are out there, um, you know, obviously, the aftermarket Bosgate is an option. That's what I understand is a little bit different than the Harley stamp yes. versions. Um, and then uh, what was the one we looked at? International Speedway Cicada. 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 Um, I think they have a really good product as far as their speakers, uh, quality of speakers. Uh, you know, and they're doing some things to increase their quality on their amps, but those have in, built-in DSPs which that would be an extra cost uh, with some of the other brands that are out there. Yeah. So they're, it yeah, just kind of gets to that point. on their speakers too than, than even sounds did. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you get into this world where there's, when you really start looking into it, there's just so many options that you start overwhelming yourself of, all right, which is better and is it worth the extra dollar? And I kind of sit back watching the two of y'all, that's kind of where I'm seeing the hell around. Is that a fair assessment? I think, yes, it is. I, I think I have come to uh, a conclusion 
Um, and, and actually, let me back up. I've come to the conclusion, but it has been verified by those that sell these systems, that uh, they're looking for quality. But more than that, they just want them to be loud because that's what everybody's looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's good. That's fine. That, you know, we're, we come to these rallies, uh, and even at home, if a guy's got a stereo, he pulls up to the Shell Station in, in Morris or, or somewhere in Stockton, and, and he's got that stereo blaring loud, and you can hear the words, and you can hear the music. If you go up there and try to uh, comprehend quality, it's just not there. And the reason it's not there is because you can't hear low ends as you said, at 60 plus miles an hour, so they don't put lows on a motorcycle. Um, lows being what we consider, as you said, auto, auto uh, automobile radios, subwoofers. Yeah. Um, subwoofers require power, amps, and batteries. Uh, some of these show bikes have got two or three extra batteries in their bags, uh, three or four amps to push these things. Um, you know, we can't do that. And I don't want that. I mean, I'd love to have it from a. You know, it's impractical it, 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 for yeah. somebody that traveling. It, what it, we do. Yeah, travels. So. It, even a, a day trip. You, you know, you need a certain amount of storage space. You need yep. maneuverability. You need, uh, you know, to not have to, uh, you know, avoid small bumps in the road because mm. of whatever going on added weight there's a whole lot of things and it's pretty technical i guess you know probably be a a, a series we'd need to break down and spend some time on and probably better educate ourselves on but there's a lot of yeah. things that, that go into that availability of airspace it, you know um, something to, to bounce that sound off of yep uh, all those things that that just aren't readily available on a motorcycle. Can it be made to happen? Yes, with the right amount of money and the right amount of time and the right know-how. Yeah. You know, there's some, some tremendous sounding stereo systems out there, but again, they're, they're from what I've seen, not uh, not everyday rider bikes. They're, they're it's not conducive to what, to, to, to what we do. I think if you took a scale of, you know, one to 10, you know, uh, most everybody falls in that one to seven and a half. Uh, and, then, and then that top, maybe two, two and a half is going to make room for something of that magnitude. Uh, you know, we talk, as we've already mentioned with Larry, and I don't know last names, but we've got to know some of these guys. Larry with Cicada. Uh, he goes by Gorilla with Sounds. Uh, Tony at, at, at Daytona Audio. Jay at Volunteer Audio. These guys have been doing audio for years. They know their stuff. They've been putting them in motorcycles for years, and they all say the same thing. You know, we hear what you're wanting. We know you want quality, but what's out there and what the demand is is loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's really what they're producing is something that's loud. So with that being said, I think we just drew the line and go, you know what, I'm just, I need to figure out something different than just loud. I want loud because I want to be able to hear it while I'm going down the highway at 80 miles an hour. But there's got to be a, or, yeah, somewhere. There's got to be, there's got to be something somewhere that falls in that middle that allows me to get, and what I've got on the limited right now, I damn, it sounds pretty good. I mean, yeah, I, I like back your over system there, I mean, it, on limited. I, I get just enough of that low mid, yeah. mid low that I can be satisfied with. If I can, if I could get that on the road, glad, I guess I'd be happy. I mean, to be honest. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people, you know, when you start looking at a two to three, $3,500 investment, uh, obviously that's not your show quality. You're not going to get car base, mm -mm. but most people find themselves still wanting with those systems. Um, not to get too technical with that 60 to 80 Hertz, base range which is that low mid mm -hmm. kind of a range and uh, maybe even up to 100 but uh you know really that trying to do that in a, a non-modified air cavity uh of a motorcycle uh, that's available without major modifications is tough to do yeah. and so you, you you hear it in the show room floor or uh on the 
or show box or whatever, and then you go home, and then you're like, man, I wish there was more bass. Yeah. Or those highs are, are ear piercing, or, you know, because it's just loud. Um, and so a lot of times people will spend this $2,500, $3,000, even $3,500 for some of these systems that are really the difference between them all is probably fairly minimal to most average use yeah. end users. But uh, you get home, and after a little while, you're kind of still longing for more. And that's kind of what I'm seeing out of y'all that what, what y'all are looking at. So, you know, I kind of brought this up because I'm sure a ton of our, our listeners that are looking at this uh, and considering this are, are having these same thoughts and questions and conversations. Yeah, if you're looking for uh, an upgrade in any kind of audio, um, you know, I, I definitely would say, you know, step back and, and make sure you do your research and, and, and know what you're after because, um, you know, and, and I'll throw out some numbers. Look, a Good system that's loud uh, and and halfway decent quality is you better have five grand in your pocket. Um, if you want a show show bike kind of, you better have about fifteen grand in your pocket. Now you can do some other stuff; it's a whole lot cheaper. Um, but just be careful that you're not just shall I go so strong as saying don't piss your money away on you know five hundred dollars a thousand somebody talks you into something because you're just wasting it it's use your stock stuff enjoy it the best you can and try not to blow the speakers oh, i think you can get into a really good system that most end users are going to be happy with uh for somewhere around the twenty five hundred dollars range well the problem is, is there's there's two factors in that one you've got to figure out the speakers that can handle any kind of amp and then none of your factory amps that own Harley Davidson's, I'll speak mainly, are going to push enough to validate speakers that can handle it. So you're definitely looking at a swap. And even in 22, when we all did what we did, the package that, that we bought was $2,200 two, three years ago. Yeah. You know, so yes, you're right. But I think if, you know, hindsight's 2020, if we had, if we, if we could go back in time with our current knowledge, we would we might have done stuff a little different then, uh, just to try yeah. to have the the, the, the mid lows uh, to help out a little bit. Uh, on mine, I the the limited, you know, I did basically the same thing except they were six and a half, but I added the pods in the lower uh, front, and that that added uh, quite a bit of difference. Yeah, so to, I think I can tell the difference in your uh, versus my ultra limited yeah. by doing some. Well, you had the, the the SV and the lowers or SXs, the not the two way, but the one with just the yeah. mid woofer. Yeah. And then you also did that in the tour pack. That's Whereas correct. I've got the two ways in the upper bearing and the tour, and pack. The tour pack, and and the highs are, are pretty yeah. high. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, I kind of turn my treble down a little bit, but yeah. your your combination and the way Jay tuned yours, I can tell it's it's noticeably better yeah. and more enjoyable to listen to. I, you know, the, and I think DJ, will, he can chime in on this too because he's got, we, we have the exact same uh, Rogue Glide uh, 19s. And um, if I could duplicate what Boom 2 Harley did in those Rogue Glides, but allow me to turn it up about another three notches, I wouldn't be changing anything. The quality of that sound for a motorcycle is fantastic. If I'm sitting in my basement or just kind of putzing around, I can turn it up. That five, those five to sevens and those lids have got good lows. I mean, like, like I've had people that man, is that is that in the motor? That's that sounds good, and it does. But as soon as you get air stir and you get motor winding and you get exhaust going and, and you get it up to where the blue, which is the uh, the advancement of the volume when the engine starts running get about two digits above where the volume is and you you can't take it much louder than that without blowing the speaker so and of course that's those harley you know paper speakers and, and that's that's what they do so. yeah i mean our, our ride tonight I, I listened and i think my takeaway at the moment or, or feeling at the moment is that if i'm in a half helmet uh, I, I have no problem with the stereo that I've got, with the speakers that I've got yeah. that set up. It's when I go to a full face helmet uh, that at any kind of highway speed, you just can't hear it. No. Uh, and listen, some of y'all are, I, I'm sure, are, are going, well, 
you know, turn it down, put some, uh, <laughs> you know, earphones in and helmets, comm systems, whatever, cardos. Uh, and I've got those too. And, and I run those and, and that's, that's fine. They've got their place, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to have both. I'd like to have options. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I'm by myself, I just want to jam and I want it to be loud. I want yeah. it to sound good and I want to get in my zone and just cruise. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like yeah. that's lacking in the current system. So while y'all were doing that, I, I ventured off and ended up finding myself uh, over at Reinhardt uh, tent hanging out and uh, didn't know, I saw everybody lined in kind of, they don't call it Main Street, that main thoroughfare through uh, Destination Daytona. And um, I didn't know what was coming. I wasn't watching the event calendar or anything, but apparently Clydesdale showed up. Uh, they did. That was pretty cool. Uh, it was. Got to see them. They had six of them, eight of them, eight. And it was four. Eight, I think four yeah. or five pairs. It, four, yeah, it was four four pairs. Um, if you've never, I've seen them a couple times before uh, in Atlanta. Um, uh, those they're phenomenal beasts. I mean, just the horses and they're just they are. But um, yeah, they were phenomenal. Very, uh, you know, iconic. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I guess that's the first time I've ever seen them. Yeah. So I thought it was kind of neat. Well, um, I, I, we kinda, were. I watched from a distance from the Reinhardt tent, but uh, it was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, they they just, I don't know. You know, before the whole Bud Light thing happened, and we're not going to get into the political BS of that, but, you know, I mean, for years, you know, when those commercials came on TV, they were always, you know, uh, awesome to watch. They did a good job at the marketing part of it. There was a little bit of patriotism involved, and, and uh, so yeah, when I saw them, you know, coming around, went back and watched the video, and it was it was it was pretty good. They still had Budweiser on the side of the um, trailer, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good. Um, you, you know, and we, we've been there, and I'll ask you guys: was the is the crowd bigger? I, and we talked about it for a brief moment, but yeah. the crowd is bigger over there uh, this year so far, and, and the weather is not Dude, it's ideal. Day too. <laughs> yeah. That's what blew me away was. How many people were at destination on day one? Yeah. yeah. So we were there Thursday, pre-rally, and it was moderate. We know how the pre-rally is. Friday was the first day. I, I was blown away with I, the crowd. Yeah. I, it was enough of a crowd on day one that we were reluctant to go back yeah. on day two. Yeah. So then we obviously didn't get enough because before the night was over, we ended up on Main Street. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's like, you know, you got to make that. You got to make the rounds. Obligatory tour down Main Street. Say that right? Right? I mean, what was that? Obligatory. Does that mean? You're was... here when it went in Rome, that's as they right. say. That's right. Uh, and so we, we did go to Main Street. Uh, There'll be some videos that'll be hitting some walked, of our social media stuff. Walked You'll up to... one, turned around, <laughs> came down the other, about halfway down the other. John said, I think I want to see some more bikes. I was like, I, I, I ain't been able to stop and look at bikes because I'm going to get run over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you stop, somebody's eating you. Yeah, we had to at one point uh, slide into an alleyway just to kind of get out we of the We did. Fast just to, so, yeah, just, just take a breath, let my feet. Yes. Dog is barking. Yeah, it's um, my it's it's like going to Disney World in the summertime, or it's, you know, it's in the, oh, yeah. in the spring Gatlinburg. or whatever. It, Gatlinburg, we used to be. It's which is great. DJ mentioned this a little earlier. It's great to see that. It's great to see the enthusiasm. I hope all the rallies across the country this year are just you know blooming and exploding. Uh, that's good for the for the industry, and that's good for you know the the, the brands. Um, uh, you know, so. I think that's good. I think that's good. I just can't help but assume that there's a large percentage of those people that are just there for the party or the show and are not really into motorcycles at all. So it's funny yeah. you mention that because we noticed something the night before when we were down there, um, and I still saw what appeared to be, and maybe this is a difference that I've never really thought about, but you, know, you got a lot of upstate uh up north colleges that are experiencing their spring break. So mm -hmm. I'm saying a mm -hmm. lot of college students that are down here on their spring break that just happen to be, 
Oh, it's bike week too. Yeah, yeah. And I saw a lot of that walking up and down Main Street last night. Yeah. Um, so I think that contributes to the crowd numbers, you know, because you got a bunch of college stuff. Okay. So, well, go check out Main Street Bike Week, you know. Well, my oldest is on spring break. Yeah, he's with his, his mom in San Antonio this week. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know if all, if all colleges are, you know, but the state of Alabama is colleges mm. spring break this, I guess, this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, but yeah, it's, uh, oh my goodness, it's, uh, it's definitely crowded. Uh, and it, I mean, a lot of diversity in the crowd. Yeah, there is. There is. Uh, Anywhere from that's a head scratcher. 18 all the way up to probably 70. 81. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 18 to 81? Yeah, that's right. I did see something that threw me for a loop. I, I saw, um, and, and, and I admire it. So please don't think that I'm making fun of this because I think it's awesome. But I saw uh, an elderly lady on her truck with her walker strapped to the back of the truck. I'm yeah. not kidding. Yeah. You. I, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. You know, and, and at first I was kind of like, wait, what? And then I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 I mean, it truly really kind of is inspiring. Yeah. You chuckle a little bit and you go, ah, what? Good for her. Yeah, that's exactly. right. <laughs> Good yeah. for her. And there's been, you know, there's some guys that will uh, that have a way of uh, like mounting their wheelchairs and things all mm-hmm. around. I've seen a couple of those. I haven't seen them this trip, but I've seen them. Uh, but I mean, when it's in you. You got to ride. You got to ride. I guess. And, you know, so you know. one thing that has kind of stood out to me, and it's maybe because I'm, I'm opening my or educating myself a little bit uh, through social media of uh, you know the the chopper craze is kind of coming back, coming back hard, and I've seen a ton of choppers uh, in the last forty eight hours down yeah. here, and and I don't know you know. I've kind of seen the Dyna throwbacks, but now we're seeing the Chopper throwbacks, and um, I've seen some really cool home build choppers in the last forty eight hours. Mm-hmm. I mean, like really, like there was, was a lot of them last night. That that place we went, uh, yeah, remember that bar? One, uh, horse, one horse saloon. One horse saloon. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah. we came out of one horse. There's probably you know ten guys that that come out ahead of us, and, and you know. They're all out there adjusting chokes and priming and kicking. Oh, yeah. uh, And they're all young guys. Well, most of them. There was a couple of older ones. but I mean, Anywhere from probably 25 to... Yeah. One guy looked like he was in his 50s easy, you know. But seeing the young guys doing it, I mean, because, you know, those bikes require attention, you know. I mean, for the most part, these newer ones, we get on ours if it needs attention. We usually have to take it to the mechanic. (laughs) But, I mean, those bikes, I mean... Yeah, I, I remember my lawnmower. I mean, that, it's kind of like the lawnmower. You choke it, you get to get it started, you rev it up, you give it a little gas, and if it ain't working, you 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 know, you get your hands down there and you adjust it's a few things. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, but it's great to see. That means they're, you know, somewhat trade-minded, yeah. you know, mechanically-minded to be able to, you know, get it running. So it's pretty. Some guy was riding something that was jumping curbs on it. I don't I don't know what it this is. like it had tractor tires on it or something. It, it did. It was, I don't know. Oh, it was Springer front end. Yeah. Um, I, I did pick up that, but uh, yeah, the like I, little jibs yeah. tractor tires on the front of it, like the old ones. It was a chopper. Yeah, it was. It, it was cool. I, yeah, I enjoyed I was, seeing a lot of that yeah. stuff last night. Um, it was had neat. flat track tires on it. And, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I I wish you know if we'd stopped him from doing burnouts and jumping curbs out there like yeah. he was we might have had a conversation with him a little bit about it and yeah see where he was at but no uh, there was a little kid yeah, that had cool. a honda c uh cb 500 i think you know had a little muffler on it that gave it a little it's almost had like four cylinder with glass packs you know just <laughs> but i was thinking all oh, these guys are just they're living their best lives and it was awesome i enjoyed watching it i mm-hmm. feel I'm going over and getting on mine. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. I'll get out of y'all's way. <laughs> I mean, because, like, it wasn't about cost at that point. It was about, you know, they were living it. Yeah. I mean, they were doing, they didn't care what anybody was riding or uh, they just wanted, they were just riding. That was all they wanted to do. Yeah. And, we, and we got to see last night. What did we get to see? Oh. Got to see a guy jump up on a bar and uh, oh, do the God. pole dance. <laughs> Yeah, that's when I with I, a seventies porn stash. That's when I walked out of that bar. Uh, this is not for me. Um, 
That's I walked outside and John was out there and I was like, yeah, I don't think that's what Tim came, brought us here to yeah, see. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 left the I walked outside and sat on the sidewalk the rest of the night after that. And it wasn't yeah. that he got up and kind of did a funny and made everybody laugh or whatever. He actually knew what he was doing and that was scary. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> as, as I was walking I mean, past him to the front door, I saw him twirling around the thing. And locked pulled. his legs and ankles around that like, pole yeah, so he wouldn't no, slide down. No. I'm like, a lot of diversity in Daytona. Yeah, there is. There is. All right, guys, we got some other stuff to talk about. We'll save for the next uh, next podcast. Uh, we have an email somewhere. Yep, yep. Let me get yep. that card. Or, or shoptalk at gmail.com. We do. TikTok is RR Shop Talk, and Instagram is RR.shoptalk. And um, there's going to be a lot of footage, little uh, reels, little shorts coming out about a lot of this stuff we're seeing. We're trying to get some of it out there now. Maybe it's already there, but uh, bear with us. You'll get to see some of this. Uh, uh, I think I hashtagged uh, the college kid that got hit uh, in the side of the head, cold cock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so oh, we'll gosh. talk about that one maybe in the next one. So, <laughs> all right, John, tell them all. Tell them adios, and we'll see them next time. I appreciate you listening to us, Bible, for the last uh, 30 minutes or so. Um, we're, if you're in Daytona or at home, I hope you got beautiful weather and somewhere on two wheels enjoying two lanes. Awesome job, guys.